Hello and welcome to this learn all analysis video on how to take oil samples. In a few short minutes you'll have a good grounding in how to take samples from your machinery, safely and correctly, so you get the most benefit from your oil sampling program. The reason for this video is many believe they know how to take a sample of oil or other machinery fluids, but bad quality sampling still affects around 40% of all samples. An oil sample is supposed to reflect the conditions in your machinery. So taking a sample from a machine that hasn't been operating for a month, or from the bottom of a sump, is unlikely to be representative because the oil will not be well mixed. This means you may collect or miss certain things depending on where you take the sample. Ideally you want to sample whilst the machine is running after achieving operating temperature and pressures to ensure the oil is fully mixed throughout the machine. If this is not safe to take a live sample, then do so soon after shutdown instead. Equally, it is important to be consistent in how you take a sample and document the process. This is because if you always take a sample mid sump via the dipstick, but your colleague always samples from the bottom drain valve, there will be differences between your samples in location and cleanliness. This video will cover some of these points, so let's begin. The most important part before sampling is to make sure it is safe to do so. So dress for the part and wear the correct personal protective equipment and abide by any of the usual safety rules you would have when performing machinery maintenance tasks. Ensure you confirm it's safe to approach and that machinery operators know you're going to be sampling the equipment so that it isn't operating in a way that would put you at risk whilst you're sampling. It is also important to confirm the sample bottle is safe to use for fluid sampling, so the container doesn't leak or break when sampling or transporting. Always look for the cog mark, as in the picture above, as a sign the bottle is designed for oil sampling. Once you've confirmed it is safe to sample, then you need to identify your sampling point. This may be a dipstick or a dedicated sampling valve. If fitting a dedicated valve, try to fit on a return line before the filters to give the most useful wear data. Ideally on an elbow or bend which gives extra mixing of the oil prior to collecting. On very large and complex systems, you may add a secondary sampling point after individual components or machines. If sampling a large storage or header tank, then top, middle and bottom of the tank samples help to give an overall picture of the tank. For greased bearings, you can use a dedicated grease extraction needle, or when introducing new grease, collect the old grease as it is pushed out for sampling midway through the process. So now we have handled the where, the next step is when you should sample. Sample when the machine is as close to operating conditions as possible. Clean around the sampling point and run off some oil prior to sampling to ensure the sample is clean. You may also want to wipe the pump surface that will contact the bottle with a lint-free cloth if there is any visible oil around the threaded area, usually because the oil bottle was overfilled on a previous sample. Don't forget to label the sampling point for next time so others can repeat the process. It's also worth noting that these are only general guidelines, so work with what is safe and practical for your circumstances. If you're wondering how often you should be sampling, many equipment manufacturers now give guidelines on when to sample. But if these are not available, you may wish to pause the video and look at these recommended guidelines for sampling before going on to take a sample using a vacuum pump. We will now move on to how to take a sample using a vacuum pump. We'll use a diesel engine as an example via the dipstick. The first point is you need to get tubing to approximately mid sump. This can be done by drawing the dipstick out, wiping it clean, measuring the tubing length against it and marking the point to push the tubing to. You then need to add around 1-2 to two feet or around 60 centimeters extra length depending on how close you want to be to the top of the dipstick when taking a sample and cut this additional length. The pen mark is where you are pushing the tube to not the end length of the tubing as you need some spare length to feed into the pump as well. Make a note of the total length and where to mark the tubing next time so you don't have to keep measuring against the dipstick. You might before visiting next time want to pre-cut some lengths of tubing to this length to make sampling easier and quicker. 
Once cut, unscrew your bottle and screw to the pump. Loosen the top seal on the pump and push the tubing through to just above the fill line. Tighten the seal on the top of the pump and then pull the handle a few times to create a vacuum drawing the oil sample into the container. When about half to three quarters full, you can pull the tubing out of the dipstick slightly and begin to release the pump valve to slow the flow. This means the remaining oil in the tubing will fall back into the dipstick and bottle, meaning there is less chance of oil spillage when withdrawing the tubing. Briefly inspect the sample for any visible signs of contamination such as cloudiness, emulsification, any sediment, metal or water droplets. If there is any contamination, then resample to confirm the sample you've taken is representative. You may choose to discard the initial sample and refill the bottle if resampling, but especially if you see metallic particles or gross contamination, it is best to send both samples for analysis, labelled as initial and second fills, just in case a problem was highlighted in the first sample. As soon as you've taken the sample, unscrew the bottle from the pump and recap it to prevent contamination from the environment entering the sample. The tubing that has gone through the pump should be allowed to drain any remaining drops of oil and have a quick wipe on the bottle side before pulling out of the pump so as not to contaminate the pump. You can now post your samples, but keep a note of the bottle K number so that you can complete your sample submission process by visiting lubeware.com, logging in to create a sample and registering your bottle barcode. Thank you for watching and hopefully you feel far more prepared to take your next oil sample. To find out more about oil and fluid analysis, visit learnoilanalysis.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.